So you've probably heard people on social media saying that the cat property IA industry is dying. I mean, pick your poison. You got drones, you got photo assist, you got AI, you got AR. Is it though? Is it possible to build a career as an independent adjuster in 2020 and beyond? In this video, I'm gonna talk about why I believe that robots and fancy insure tech aren't going to make field adjusters obsolete, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, Matt here. The job of independent property adjuster is alive and well. Why? Because fundamentally, claims is a face-to-face, people-person job. At the highest levels, the carriers compete on only one metric and one metric only. How likely are you to recommend big insurance companies to your friends and family? Insurance companies will do anything to make sure that the response that they get to that question on a scale of one to 10 is a 10. Everything else is secondary. So what's the number one thing that helps them to get tens on their NPS surveys? face-to-face -face settlements and a check in an insured's hand. Now, I don't like to trot out my resume unless I have to, but I've been in this business for more than 20 years now. I've seen this conversation happen again and again on social media and back in the old days on catadjuster.org. The industry is dying. There's a surplus of IAs out there, so good luck getting any work. Direct repair is making field adjusters obsolete. Such and such huge insurance company is doing another reorg and they're firing all their IA firms and building their own cat teams. I mean, I've been hearing this stuff literally since the day I started doing this. After Irma, carriers are gonna cut fee schedules in half. You know what, they said that after Katrina and that was 15 years ago. I'm not going to speculate on the motives of people who trot this stuff out every year in social media or whatever, but the simple truth is this. Only the best adjusters will consistently work and consistently earn great money every year, no matter what else is going on. It doesn't matter what the weather is doing. It doesn't matter what new tech is out there. It just doesn't matter. If an IA is good, fast, friendly, and can be counted on to step up and get it done with a smile and no complaints, they will be as busy as they want to be. That's a fact. How do I know? because I'm good, I'm fast, and I'm friendly. The most money I've made yet in a year had not one landfalling hurricane, there were no wildfires, and there were no big Texas, Dallas, whatever hailstorms. Not one storm I worked on was on the news. In fact, most of the storms that I work aren't on the news. That year I had big hail in a handful of small to medium sized towns, just me and maybe a half a dozen other top tier IAs, and we do this year after year. Ah, oh, Matt, you just proved my point. You have to be in a small clique to make it in this business. There's no way I can break into that super small club. Listen, the only thing that gets me gigs like that, that puts me in that small group of consistently working adjusters is that I'm good, which means that I have great damage ID, construction knowledge, and estimates. I'm fast, which means that I'm able to close more than six claims a day, every single day, and yes, it's absolutely possible, and if you wanna make any good money at this, it's, it's kind of required. And I'm friendly, which means that I've got great customer service. I don't take things personally from anybody, whether it's a roofing contractor, or the homeowner, or my manager, or the agent, whoever it is, and I always set and work to exceed expectations with everybody. Everybody that I work with at that level does all of those things at least as well as I do. And I'm not too proud to say that in many cases, a lot better. So Matt, what you're saying is, is that you got some kind of secret knowledge and special skills that I just can't get access to that gives you a special advantage of the rest over the rest of us. No, I don't. Good, fast, friendly. That's it, that's all you need to know. You know what, that's a lie. That's actually not it. That's not all you need to know. The secret that I know that you don't know is this. In order to get into the top 20% of IAs, I discovered that all I needed to do was just put in 10% more effort. To get into the top five or 10% of IAs, well, that's where the real work is. How did I figure this out? So. I'm not some random dude who went on Irma a couple of years ago and decided that I can make a fortune selling an online course about how to run claims. I have done nothing but run field claims for the last 20 years. I spent 15 of those years trying to figure out how to address the major problem that I feel that I know is the number one threat to our industry as independent adjusters. As a group, 
we suck. I have approached firms and even carriers about developing training that I believe will help reduce errors, speed up production, and improve customer service, but because the insurance industry moves at the speed of a sleepy turtle, and because developing some new untried training paradigm is expensive for them and doesn't fit into their corporate models a lot of the time, they passed, which honestly is actually fine. I actually prefer it now because I can talk to you without some corporate attorney over my shoulder telling me what I can and can't say. So I'll say it again. Independent adjusters as a group suck. The only real reason that insurance companies look to use direct repair or photo assist is because they're trying to claw back some of the quality that they lose when they put us, independent adjusters, in the field. This is not a popular idea, and if I wasn't running Adjuster TV on my own, independently, I probably wouldn't be able to say all of this. Because there is no consistency or minimum quality in adjuster training, and because there's no consistency of quality even among veteran IAs, let alone the new people who don't know anything yet, the insurance company's customers are getting an extremely inconsistent level of service. Let me put it this way. I've run thousands of reinspections on adjusters who have as many years in the field as I do, or even more, and they do terrible work. They miss damage, they write bad estimates, they treat the insured, they treat the insured's contractor rudely, yet these people still get work. And why is that? Why are people who aren't that good still allowed to work? The problem is, is it because there are many more claims every year than there are adjusters like me and my friends who are good and fast and friendly, somebody's gotta do those claims, right? So do you wanna know why it's so easy to get on the first call list if you put in 10% more effort? It's because the level of quality that you have to beat is low, okay? We suck. I'm sorry to have to say this, but it's the truth to me, it's the truth. From my 20 years of experience, this is what I believe, and this is, this is to me, this is the real reason why IA is a four-letter word on the carrier side. They don't like to use us because, like I said, our quality is inconsistent across the board, and we often they're cleaning up after us, even on simple claims. This job is not for everybody. It's not even for most people, okay? There is inconsistent training, and there's no consistent inf information out there about how to get going in this work. And this is something that I've been trying to fix with Adjust Your TV. My dream with all of this isn't to try and find a way to make money selling you something. It has and always will be to try and move the needle on quality as a group for us. So if you want to know how to crush it as an IA, the answer is simple. You outwork everybody else and you do things that nobody else will do. You take the crap deployments, you sit in the call center, you do photo assist, you do all these things even though they don't seem to be doing anything for you in the moment, especially since you may have taken a leaf to do this job and left a really good paying job. So here's the tough love. If you're not willing or able to take five steps back now for the next couple, two or three years so that you can spend the next 20 years after that making a great income while not even working the whole year, then this job is not for you. I release you from wasting one more second trying to decide if cat property claims is going to be your next career because it is not. You're going to crash and burn and you'll take the rest of us down with you. And there's no shame in this. If you decide that this isn't for you, that's good. You know one way not to go. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you see a golden opportunity to work harder and to see that effort show up in your next paycheck, if you're willing to bust your ass with no apparent benefit now, but with the faith and belief that your efforts will pay off in the long run, if you have stamina, grit, and can take a beating and get up without crying like a baby, I'm telling you, if you can just tough it out and be one of the last people standing, you will be standing at the top. So come on, we've got work to do. So that's it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a very happy Thanksgiving and have a great storm.